They'd split up before we'd get him. Was it trouble? No. Well, we didn't find a strong box. And one of them claims he wasn't with the others. But they were all in the same camp. They fit the description the stage driver gave us. I guess he'll be able to identify him. I saw your horse over there. Were you looking for me? I need your official signature. But it can wait. Well, I guess I'd better tend to my hotel. It's up to the marshal. Uh, Deputy, whose black saddle is that out front? Oh, that's a local man, Clay Culhane. Our friend ain't used to this kind of treatment. Well, you know Culhane? Well, if that's the man I'm thinking of and you know him, well, his gun could get us out of here. He's no friend of mine. How's he diggings, Marshal? We should have looked it over before the holdup. I'll take those ropes. Marshal, I want a lawyer. This town Godwin. You're really worried, huh? How about you two? <laughs> Won't be in here long enough for that, Marshal. <laughs> what about the lawyer? We got one. Play Culhane. He the only one? You want to see him? Yeah. Yeah, I want to see him. Now, it's just common sense, Nora. Everyone should have a will. And to make a will, one should see a lawyer? <laughs> sure way to draw one up. I see. Tell me, Clay, do you have a will? <laughs> well, my situation is that... Oh, you'd like some coffee? Uh, thanks, Nora. Later. One of the prisoners wants a lawyer. Just one? Steele, a fellow that says he wasn't with the others. You found them all together. That's right. Well, I'll go talk to him. Thanks for the coffee, Nora. As soon as I shake off some of this trail dust, I'll be back for that coffee. A stack of hotcakes that high. I'll fix them myself, but I'll have to have someone help me carry them.
I got them. Sims, get the other one. They was fighting, Marshal. And them two was beating up on him. So you gave him your gun to beat with? Well, no, of course not. Barnes was knocked down. I thought he was knocked out. And Niles was choking on steel, so I went in. But Barnes wasn't knocked out at all. Then he got your gun. You want to be a full-time deputy. Give me those keys. You wanted a lawyer? This is Clay Culhane. Could be that this one wasn't with them, Marshal. That strong box is still missing. So what if it is? Let's just say you worked with them. You stage the fight to break out of jail, then you see a chance to clear yourself and end up with the loot. Well, that might be, Marshal, if we was guilty and he was with us. Don't you forget it. If you still want a lawyer, I'm the only one in town. All right. I'd like to talk privately with Steele, Marshal, and get a hearing. There'll be a hearing this afternoon when the stage driver gets in to identify him. You can talk to him in his cell. I got another shirt in my saddlebag. Get him a shirt. Harvey took their gear to the livery stable. The end cell. That lawyer gonna mess things up? We'll be out of here for then. Somebody else wants that money as much as we do. I never had a lawyer before. What do you want to know? Everything. How'd you happen to be with Barnes and Niles? I had a fire going. I was already under my blankets. They must have seen my fire. Yelled at me so there'd be no trouble. Then they rode in. No sign of a strong box or any money? Nope. If they had it, they must have hit it before they got to my camp. All right. You rode in. Then what happened? They claimed they was lost in the dark. I guess they was, too. Otherwise, they wouldn't have stopped. They was tired, so they, they stayed. That didn't bother you? As far as I knew, there were just a couple of lost cowpokes. I had my gun handy under my blankets. And then along came the marshal. They'd unsaddled, just about to turn in. And all moved in before we knew it. In no time at all, they had our six guns, our rifles, and our hands tied up all nice and neat. Barnes and Niles started claiming right away that you were one of them? Yeah, I couldn't figure why. Well, now, maybe there was a third outlaw, like the driver said. Only they'd split up. Then when these two were caught, they might have figured their partner would have a better chance if the law thought it had all three. Well, Marshal, I got Steele's shirt here. Give it a call, Hayes. He's talking to him. I'm going to go get something to eat. I'll take it. Colleen, there's something I think you ought to know. When I was getting Steele's shirt, I found this. Now, I was going to give it to the marshal, but I reckon that concerns you more than it does him. I thought you'd be interested in it. Sims, since this is between Steele and myself, I'll tell the marshal about it, all right? Sure. Thank you. Your shirt. Anything else you want to know? The driver's identification will be very important. We should be ready in case he identifies you by mistake. You said if he identifies me by mistake? You believe me then? I took your case, I'll do everything I can. But you've got to tell me the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Why were you coming to Latigo? I was looking for work. I said I had to have the truth. All right. I came looking for a man who gunned down my kid brother. Go on. That's it. Deputy found this when he got your shirt. I didn't know his name was Steele. You didn't know anything about him at all. But you killed him, Culhane. And he was just a kid. It took you long enough to find me. I stayed in the army a couple of years after the war. I had no family except the kid. When I got out, I went looking for him. This piece in the newspaper was all I could find. But I heard enough about you and that quick gun of yours. Your brother thought he could make his reputation by gunning me, Steele. 
I had no other choice. I tried to wing him, but he kept right on firing. I swore I'd face you, Colleen. And I'm still gonna do it. I'd say we better wait until you get out of jail. Then whatever happens when you're clear will take care of itself. Until then, I'm still your lawyer. If you want me. I don't have any choice. What if I pay for your services in lead instead of silver? Well, I'll do my best to give you the right change. Can I get you some more? Uh, no, thanks. This is fine. Yeah, very good, Nora. Where's Clay? I left him over at the jail. Is he defending those men? Just one, a fellow named Steele. And by the way, I'm going to need your lobby for a hearing this afternoon. One of these days, I'm going to ask the territory of New Mexico to pay me rent for the use of my hotel. Maybe you could get Mr. Culhane to sue for you. <laughs> get? Hmm. Why do you always call him Mr. Culhane? Why don't you call him Clay? I don't know. Just the way of it, I guess. The way of it seems to be you just don't get along. He's the one gets frothy, not me. He says you're always on the prod. What does that mean, Gib? On the prod? Same as frothy. Oh. Best hot cakes yet. How much, Nora? Fifteen cents. Going up a nickel. So as the price of jam. What time's the hearing, Mark? 2.30. You taking Steele's case? Yes. Well, you don't seem very happy about Any it. Any reason why I should be? What's the matter? Don't you think you can get him off? I'll get him off. Whether he's guilty or innocent? Well, I think he's innocent. That's what I like about your clients, Colhane. They're always innocent. Steele could have set fire to somebody's house, and you'd say he did it just to keep his hands warm. <sighs> Mr. Norton, as driver of the stage, you had a good look at the outlaws. Take your time now. And tell us if any one or all three of the prisoners were involved. I'll tell you, Marshal. I ain't one to argue with three guns, but I didn't just sit there. I studied them good. Them last two was in on it for sure. I remember their duds. The way I recollect it, Marshal, them two took the strong box while the other one kept a gun on me. So you can't make a sure identification of the third one? Uh, not by looking, by listening. I heard him talk. He kept saying, keep him up, higher. You'd recognize his voice? Sure would, sure would. You heard the word, Steele. Say them. Oh, Marshal, I object. This is not a trial, Mr. Cohane. We're only trying to find out if there's enough evidence to bring charges against these men. You'll have your say in due time. Say it, Steele. Keep them up higher. Go ahead. Keep them up higher. Again. Keep them up higher. That's it. He's the one. Marshal, I have a few facts I'd like to offer on behalf of my client. All right, go ahead. First, I'd like to have a few words with Mr. Steele, if I may. Make it short. You can talk in the dining room. Thank you. you keep your places. We'll go on as soon as Mr. Culhane's ready. I'd like to ask a few questions of the people present, Marshal. Starting with you. Now, would you tell us how you took these men into custody? Well, when Norton reported the holdup, I deputized Sims and Harvey. We rode out to the spot where the holdup took place and read a few signs. And what did you find? There were too many tracks in the road to figure out. We did find a trail of three horses cutting off cross country, but we didn't follow them. Well, why not? They looked fake. Two of them were light and one was heavy, like a man riding and leading two horses. Could have been a move to throw us off or just a cowpoke with a string. So you kept to the road? That's right. So we came to more tracks heading off from it. 
They were made by two horses being pushed pretty hard, so we followed them, and that's how we surprised them in camp. Now, the trail you followed, Marshal, was made by just two horses. There were three men in camp. One of them could have been making that false trail, cut loose the two horses he was leading, and joined up with the other two. Well, that's possible. Marshal, when you made the arrest, was there any trouble or gunplay? We were on them before they could even show a gun, much less use one. Thank you. Barnes, you still claim that you had nothing to do with that holdup? Yeah. And you also claim that you and Niles were in the company of Steele for three or four days. That's what we said. Well, what were the three of you doing all this time? Looking for work. Ain't that right? We met him down on the trail by Socorro. What kind of work? Whatever we could find. Herding, riding fence, <laughs> you name it. Pretty good all-around men, huh? We'll do. Good with a gun? Yeah. We're all right. Would you say you know guns as well as the next man? Well, who don't? Either no guns, you don't wear one. Well, let's just see how good you are. What do you mean? What are you after, Culhane? I'm not talking about how good these men are at using guns. Just how much they know about them. What kind of gun does the marshal carry, Barnes? Well, it's... Uh... It's Frontier 45. Hmm, has a pretty good eye for guns, hasn't he, Marshal? A moment ago, you had a brief glance at my gun. Do you remember anything about it? Well, I do. I'm a cold peacemaker. You're right. I don't mean nothing. Most anybody notices another man's gun. What kind of gun did Steele carry? Well, now, you claim you were with him for several days. You must have seen his gun. I, uh, I forget. Well, you only had a brief glimpse at my gun, and you were able to tell us quite a bit about it. Why can't you tell us about Steele's gun? I'll tell you why. Because you never saw it. It was under his blanket when you rode into his camp. Then when the marshal made the arrest, there wasn't a gun shown, right? If Steele was with them, marshal, they'd have known his gun. Especially if they were planning a holdup. Let's have it quiet. What about the driver's identification of Steele? I'm coming to that. When they tried to break jail and Barnes held his gun on us, you remember what he said? Barnes told us to keep him up, higher. That's what Mr. Norton said the third man said. Let him hear Barnes. Mr. Norton, please cover your eyes this time. And listen very carefully. Keep him up. Higher. That's it. That's the voice. <laughs> it isn't easy to identify a voice through a piece of cloth, Marshal. You made your point. Sims, take Barnes and Niles back to their cells. Stop by the office. I'll return your property. Seems like I owe you something, Culhane. I'll have to go to the Marshal's office first. I can wait. He doesn't seem very grateful. I think I'll find out for sure soon enough. Scott, Marshal, what brings you to Latigo? A couple of cusses by the name of Barnes and Niles. They're wanted for about everything over in our territory. Hmm. They made their mark in the New Mexico Territory, too. Oh, they've been here? They're still here. Sit down, I'll tell you about it.
You were very quiet. Must have been that talk about wills this morning. Don't tell me you sold your stuff. As a matter of fact, I did. That's why I was late to the hearing. You made out a will? I've left everything to you, except my law books. Give them to the next poor lawyer that tries to practice in Latigo. Don't talk like that, please. Well, I was right. Everyone should have a will, including me. Is Steele leaving town? I don't know yet. I better go see him. Why? Collect my bill. Clay. I told you what might happen, Cohan. I thought I'd find you to be about as low as a man could be. I, I guess I was wrong. I figure you gave my brother an even break. He was, he was always a pretty wild kid. What's eating you, Cohan? You still want to finish this? Behind you. Get down. Marshall slugged me and locked my deputies in a cell. Why did he bother to come after Barnes and Miles? Because they knew where the strong box was hidden. He didn't. How come you two were out here? Well, we had a little unfinished business. Andy, get the doctor. They're not lead, no, Hank. Eh? Will that do for first payment? Paid in full. Good luck. Thanks. Well, that was the toughest money I ever made. You certainly have a peculiar way of collecting your bills, Mr. Cohen. You might have been killed. Well, I wasn't. So it looks like you'll have to wait a while to collect your inheritance. I'm in no hurry. Mm -hmm. 